Ian Jones, he's a virologist at the University of Reading in the UK. Thanks so much for speaking to us, Ian. You know, I know we've spoken about this before, but again, most of the cases, the victims in particular of coronavirus, are elderly and were already ill. Is this virus still, with all of its unknowns, that much more dangerous than the regular flu that kills thousands of people every year and doesn't lead to quarantines? It depends what you mean by dangerous. I mean, clearly, the thing to remember about this virus is that there's no existing immunity in the population. If we consider it side by side with something like seasonal influenza, there is some resistance, not complete resistance, but there is some immunity in the population which limits the circulation of influenza to the periods in the winter and to only a subset of the population. The problem with any new virus where no immunity exists is in theory it can penetrate the population up to a very high level, perhaps up to 30% of the population could become infected. Okay. I was actually going to ask if a change in season, you know, due in a few months' time, might affect the strength of the virus itself. It won't affect the strength of the virus, but clearly the virus survival in the, in the environment is dependent on a number of factors, and that includes the temperature and the humidity. So, generally speaking, viruses do not do as well in the high in the drier, hotter months as they do in the colder, wetter months. And in addition to that, during the cold period, of course, people tend to group together, and that allows transmission more easily from one person to another. So I think there's a possibility that we'll see a slowdown through the summer, but you've got to keep in the back of your mind this immunity issue. There is no immunity in the population. And so if you come into contact with someone who's already infected, the likelihood is that you have a chance to also be become infected. Right. How crucial is it then, Ian, that the world be ready? I mean, the WHO is warning about a lack of preparedness. It might not be needed, but they're saying it better be ready to go. Yes, I think the situation is, I mean, my reading of the situation currently would be that the virus is here to stay. I think all the measures that are being put in place in various countries around the world are doing a good job in holding it back. I mean, the number of cases now in inter international cases are certainly small still compared to those in China, but it is growing. And so what we have to be prepared for is whether or not this virus will spread within the population as a wave very quickly through the population or whether it will be a staggered event over perhaps a few years. In the latter case, it will be possible to prepare for it in a reasonable way, the numbers of beds in hospitals, and hopefully, perhaps by the end of the year, the appearance of a vaccine. But if it was to arrive as a wave through the population, I think it would cause considerable concern. Many people would be off work at the same time. There would be overloading of the, of the hospitals, schools, universities would have to close, and so on and so forth. So it's a considerable knock on the economy, a considerable knock on the social structure, as well as the possibility that a small percentage of people will suffer a very severe outcome. I understand that you wouldn't want to raise false hopes or anything, but I mean, do you have at least a relative level of confidence in the fact uh, that it looks like a treatment uh, may be developing in the United States? Uh, they're hoping to see uh, this testing phase it's in right now uh, prove successful in the next couple of weeks. Also, we're hearing about a potential vaccine being, re being ready perhaps by May. Uh, do you feel good about those prospects? Uh, partly good. I mean, the, there's no doubt that a vaccine will arrive. The question is at what time it will arrive and how many doses can be made. I mean, if you're talking about rolling out a vaccine to protect large parts of the world, you need a huge number of doses, and that's logistically very difficult to produce. So there are issues around the vaccine, who will get it, how will it be distributed, and so on. There is also encouraging information, as you correctly point out, about possible treatments for those who are already infected, particularly new drug treatments. However, you do have to remember with virus infections that it's extremely important that the drug is given at a very early stage in the infection. If you wait for too long, then the drug is not effective. So 
isolation, diagnosis, screening the population, all of these things have to be at the forefront of the, of the, tr of, of the tracking of this virus in order to be able to deliver those, uh, those treatments if they become available. Okay, Ian Jones joining us there from Reading. Thanks so much for that.